All right, y'all, so I got the scoop, right? So this is how to find a white man one-on-one, period, for the black women. So if you paid attention to my last video, I asked, where do these girls be finding the white men at? So here is the secret. I love the fact that the girls showed up for this, okay? Y'all about to get me fired, but listen up. So they say go to the gym. I'm at the gym all the time, and I promise you, they don't be looking at you. But try that, try the gym. It was so many comments of people saying California. So it looks like, bitch, we taking a flight to California. They said the country clubs. They said Top Golf. They said hiking. Listen. They said the casinos. Period. Money. Shmoney. Number one, you find people at the casino, white people at the casino. They ain't paying for shit. Why? They're not getting. They're not getting rich at the casino. Nobody gets rich at the casino. Fair point. So. Let's just make that, you know, the casino usually wins in those scenarios. Okay. The, the question is, is like, you know, I think this goes back to like, where are you finding them and what are you offering? You know what I mean? Like there is a level of like, in like, just like anything, like when you're trying to like date someone, you have to be offering something of value. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that she's not because she very well could be. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not here to judge. I don't know her. Yeah. But, you know, when you're dating, you have to, number one, be really sure that you have something valuable to offer. Um, because Common sense. in my experience, especially with and I'll, I'm just going to use the term high value, like like productive, emotionally aware even non-emotionally aware white men typically don't settle. Mm. So they're not like, like, let's just, you know, you could not even like, like, how do I want to say this? Like as a white man, you don't even really need to be offering too much. Mm -hmm. But usually they pick winners. And I'm saying they very generally, very, very, very generally, right? So like in my experience, like if I were to even think about, you know, in my own family, you know, like most of those people married equal or above. The men? The white men? Yeah. The men. The okay. men. Yeah. Everyone in my family has either married equal or above or far above. Mm. So, you know, like. And far above meaning like a lot of different things, right? But they're they're definitely they they understand and they see value and they know how to recognize that. And I think if if you were to just bust it even more open, like more like men in general are looking for someone or a person to add value to their life, period. And I think that goes outside of race, right? That goes yeah. outside of just a white, you know, just a white man or a white man preference. Like, so if you're at the gym and you're not offering anything of value, They're you're not, not going to get stares. You're not going to get looks. Yeah, like, that's yeah. the truth, you know, like, you know, and there, I feel like there's also like an air, like an air about you, especially at the gym of, of confidence or anywhere that you are at of confidence and I think men are pretty good bull like shit readers and yeah, will and can definitely. tell whether you're being fake or not and if you're yeah. really fake a lot of people a lot of guys don't really want to deal with that and and again I'm not saying anything about this particular woman I'm just saying like at the you know finding someone on a hike like you're not going to pick up somebody at a, on a hike. Usually right. people are hiking right. with their friends and or hiking because they don't want to be around people. So like, you're not going to find someone, someone on a hike. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, you're just saying everywhere. Just yeah. Like this guy, where do you find them? Everywhere. They're everywhere. Just look around. <laughs> yeah. Totally. So like doing a video, I mean, my first thought looking at the video was just like, you're telling on yourself if you have a hard time finding a population that's like 
the mo- I don't want to say the most likely to be here, but like white people are a majority in the U.S. So if you're having a hard time finding like the majority of people who exist here, then you're already telling on yourself. Like we know where you're living or where you're coming well, from. Like, and it's where are you hanging out? Right. Right. And so like all of that matters too. And so it's like there are certain places and, you know, being in the Bay Area for like 10 years, there's places that I knew I could go to where I would be around a majority of white people. Mm-hmm. There would be places that I could go to where it would, I knew I was going to be the only white person there. Yeah. Like if you're paying attention, you can find the places where those people hang out. And then the question is, is like, how do you assimilate to those environments enough to be appealing? Right. But you hit the nail on the head it's like at the end of the day you have to be offering something just meeting a white guy doesn't mean that you're going to be getting a marriage proposal it's like okay, no what are you like how are, yeah like how are you adding value to said white guy's life especially if he's already well established doesn't really need much like one of the things that you know in my if i'm just thinking about my relationship with the with the white guy that i had like 10 years ago he didn't really need me like I was there because he liked my company. He likely liked how I looked. He liked that I came from a good family and that my, you know, and all these things, but he didn't really need my help or like need me. And if you're thinking about like being in a marriage with someone and I say this all the time is like your, your job as like, if we're taking the biblical approach to it is to be your helpmate to your husband. So how are you helping your partner the person you're dating the person you're married to like how are you helping them and what do you have to offer it comes back to like what do you have to offer and does that person like what you have to offer so basic stuff yeah yeah basics but i think you know that's one of the things that i always talk about it's like what ends up happening sometimes when people talk about whether it's swirling or divesting is I, I found that these conversations usually give women a reason to, to deflect from their lack of relationship values. Because I'm like, if you are offering something good or valuable, then you'll meet guys in your race, outside of your race, who will be interested in you because you have a good product <laughs> or you have something right. desirable. But if you have had all trashy, horrible relationships within your own community you can't get along with men you barely can get along with yourself you think you're now just going to go into another community that you don't know as much about and just pick the high value men or the desirable men like get real you know what i mean like you have to do it yourself first absolutely like if you're not actively if you're spending more time on tiktok talking about dating people that you've never dated before and you're not spending that time working on yourself understanding yourself and healing yourself then that's a problem (laughs) right you know what i mean because that's valuable time that video that first video where she had multiple cuts in multiple different places of her house that stuff takes a lot of time that's a good observation. I didn't even think about it. But you know what like, I mean? That takes a lot of time. Yeah. And so all of her mental energy is going towards idealizing a type of man that doesn't exist, likely, even in the community that she's idolizing. And she could spend all day writing in her journal about all of the things that she could work on and that she could accept about herself and that she could wrestle with and she'd come out better and she would come out with more value on the other side because there's value in these women obviously it's do they see it in themselves enough to yeah enough to sit down and be like what do i have to offer like and how can i present that in a way that's attractive to a man whether he's white or black totally different totally up to you or mexican or asian or whoever um but yeah i mean self-awareness is like key number one if you're trying to be in a relationship no i I mean self-awareness that should be the word of the day (laughs) and knowing yourself and knowing yourself like We all dealt with different traumas and different things that have really messed us up. That guy that I dated 10 years ago, that white guy, I dated him for two years. And then at the end of two years, we're going back and forth. We sort of broke up, but we sort of didn't. There was still kind of a chance. And then he ghosted me. 
Mm. After two years, I moved up to the Bay Area to, to, to probably marry this person. Like that's where my mind was at. Mm -hmm. And it, I moved up there really quickly, realized we weren't really compatible. We didn't have a lot in common and we weren't really right for each other. And we broke up and I was like, really on the fence because I really cared about him. I really loved him. I really thought we were going to like make it happen. And it didn't. And he ghosted me. Oh man. that's sucks. Didn't even respond to me. Didn't even break, like break it off in like a normal, respectable way. And that was from a white man. So just think about it. You know, like everybody's broken. Everyone has their issues and everyone has their ability to deal with and not deal with certain circumstances. Yeah, that's not and that really messed me up for a long time, and it took me a long, long time to recover from that. Yeah, yeah, because you thought I didn't, I didn't know you thought you were gonna marry him. That's pretty serious. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, him, I'm very, I mean. I'm a, yeah, like I'm a very purpose driven person. So, moving me from San Diego to the Bay Area, I was like, okay, like we have to make, we have to see if this is gonna work. Um, yeah. and it didn't, obviously. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah. Now you made one observation and I'll continue. You made one one observation earlier when you were like something to the extent of white men don't necessarily have to bring a lot, but that they can easily get someone either on their level or above. And then I think you mentioned different people in your family. Can you can you expound upon that a little bit? Well, I feel like just by And, you know, this is just my own experience, right? So if I were to think about some challenges or things that um, my family has dealt with over the generations, a, a, a broken family in the way that the black community has experienced is very, has looks very different, right? Mm -hmm. So like my, my dad lost his dad when he was five years old. Yeah. So for him, like he did experience a broken family, like his dad was gone, you know, and that impacted him really young. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there are things that, that over time just were hard to deal with and and traumas that were hard to deal with. And Mm -hmm. Um, not say, I mean, I didn't want to bring specific people into it, but like, not to say that my, I think my dad would agree with this, honestly. And if he ever sees this, he would agree with it. Like he knows that he married up, like that my mom was a, was like the one that he needed to marry because he saw her value. Okay. And so, you know, but I think to a certain extent for my, you know, for my mom, you know, she was looking for, for safety and um and some different things that my dad brought to her so for them it wasn't really even about you know being equal quote unquote class wise it was like I need this in a relationship and he needed he he liked that about my mom like he loved that my mom was super smart and was a go-getter and ambitious and I think to a certain extent it inspired him and even to a place where, you know, maybe didn't necessarily push him to be ambitious in his own life, but he kind of like lived a really steadfast life in admiration of my mom and still in admiration of my mom. Right. So I think, um, I think that was more important than, um, but it's, you know, I think it's slightly different because it was, that's one experience in mostly um, connected homes, right? Like the home for the white family is a lot, is a lot more connected, I think generally than people growing, like it's not always the same. I feel like it's not always the same for the black community where it's like, most people are growing up in single family homes with just their mother, their dad somewhere else. I mean, that's a general, I'm making general statements here, but I don't know how that plays in that dating scenario. Whereas like, it's different growing up knowing that the expectation of you is to get married and to have a family. Yeah. That was my expectation growing up. We didn't have any, I didn't really have any other option. It wasn't like, Oh, you know, and I, plenty of people got divorced that I know, like whose parents got divorced and they were all, they were all 
there were some of them were white, some of them weren't, you know, but it was like, um, yeah, generally, I don't know. I don't know if that like makes any sense, but, um, yeah, or answers the question, but that's kind of like some of my thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. So they, well, speaking to your own experience, they both kind of offer a different perspective. I mean, it wasn't like they married in the same class or that necessarily, it was a high, high, that, I mean, really it was your dad who did the hypergamy thing. And you're saying you, you've, you've seen that. Um, now I know there's this one, I don't know if I told you about it, this, this book that I'm reading right now about dating and it's, it's kind of breaking, it's trying to go into the psychology of as to why people choose who they choose, what they choose. And I'm still reading through the book, but um, you know, they went through like millions of different profiles, did interviews, um, you know, one-on-one interviews to ask people what was the main way that they're choosing their um, life partners right now. So what the sociologists found, found was that people said one thing, but then what they chose, their preferences, you know, anonymously were a lot different. And um both of the sociologists who were conducting these studies basically found that the number the number one thing driving women's interest of all across the board is well no the number no, the number one thing driving interest in general is race and they found that women all across the board including black women white women women of color of all ethnicities had a a, a preference primarily for white men and then secondarily it was for women of their own race that might connect to kind of what you alluded to earlier about um, in your experience, what you've seen is that white men don't necessarily have to always bring their A game totally, completely, and they can still marry good women um, or, you know, can marry women that have value. I wonder if it speaks to that, because based upon that right. sociological data, it showed that white men were just highly desired across the board, not just from white women, black women, Asian women, Hispanic women. Well, you also have to think about why that is. Yes. Like, why are people primarily attracted to a white man right is it because society has held them as like a standard of success safety financial support like i don't i don't know the answers to that really um i know like there's a lot of conversations i mean i've had conversations at work and with diversity training and stuff like that but um you know you kind of wonder what is the underlying preference for for a woman and what part of the white man was like represents that yeah no i don't know the answer to that but that's a question that i would have or something i would be interested in knowing more about especially if they quote unquote i mean not dominated society but generally held positions of power over time in yeah. the majority yeah well so it's like yeah Anyway, West, yeah, in the West, certainly, I mean, think about white more, whether it's patriarchy, whatever, right? I mean, we have positions of power, it is primarily to this day white men, and they kind of they allude to this in the book. I haven't, there's still things that I'm working through data wise, um, and I think they were working through a few different theories, but one of the theories that they had was that you know, women's hypergamous nature is looking at white men um you know there is there's a connection to status there's a connection to wealth there's a connection to power which obviously in america makes sense you see that to this day um i know they're they're still trying to look at some other caveats so i don't think that was like the final answer but it's something worth investigating and i know when you made that comment i was just i was thinking back to some of the data that i'm currently researching i'm like hmm, i wonder if that's alluded to your point that like yeah they don't necessarily have to maybe do this or that and they may still get these kinds of women um interesting thought i don't say i have the answer but something i also yeah and i know it's things are there are some things that like never change and then i do feel like being in the world that we live in now where you can see options anywhere in the world that it changes the dating environment completely right like like if i were to just think about my parents meeting story like my dad worked at a golf course and my mom came to visit and he was like sorry and was like oh i'm done you know like i'm ready you know like yeah i'm sold and then they got married a year later. So, like, I, I rarely hear about stories like that nowadays where people Rare. have have experiences where they just know off the bat because Rare. they weren't on Instagram. They weren't on YouTube. They weren't seeing all these different people, different types. I mean, they weren't exposed to ideologies like the ones we're talking today where it's, like, slightly destructive and untrue. So they didn't really think about that. They weren't talking like, oh, well 
I don't, I, if, if I talk to my mom and dad about this, they'd be like, what are you talking about? Like, what's the ideology? Like, huh? You know, like they just, they weren't as consumed in that. Like they're very, it was a much simpler time, not knowing everything about everyone all the time. Yeah. Which I mean, that created its own, you know, issue. Cause it's like, if you are isolated into one, into one homogenous culture, right. And then your only ideas of another culture come from media, which for a long time it did, that still created its own issues. But I get it right now. It's yeah, a, it's agreed. A completely agreed. Different. And I would say like, I didn't really learn or expand my thinking or understand that my experience was different than some of my friends growing up until I moved to the Bay Area. And I was like, oh, like my experience is way different than you. And like, I've come to these truths about life that are really one-sided and I said this to you the other day like that's why you need to expose yourself actually expose yourself to other types of people who grow up in different situations look differently than you think differently than you in order to really expand your mind and your thinking on what's possible Uh, but definitely don't just take that from the internet like actually go talk to people yeah absolutely like actually go on a date with a white guy and see what it's like don't pull your TikTok audience. Like you're not going to get a good pull. You're not going to get a good idea of how to do that. You know, how to, how to get a, how to date a white man or what a white man actually thinks. And you'll come to find that they actually have, there's a lot of people who think a lot differently and they're the same. (laughs) Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Quick. um, I do want to acknowledge there's a, a few comments. Dane C. It says it's the Hollywood image of white men. Desirability definitely plays a role. Um, mm-hmm. Black women idolize white men more than white women do, which says a lot. There is data to, to actually suggest that for sure. Um, we live in a liberated society that expects the results of a traditional society. Um, and then Dane C. Yes. <laughs> so then thank you guys for the, the super chats. As always, guys, like, share, subscribe. Um, if you like this kind of content, like what we're doing here, the best way to ensure that you see more of it is by supporting your favorite content creators. Uh, okay, so let's get back to the video. I know. Yes. There's more, and I want to see yes. more. What yes. else does she have? Say it and say what other strategies? They said go to happy hour, okay? Which I have heard that a lot. Go to happy hour. Go to expensive hotels. Go to, like, the downtown areas where you're bound to meet the type of okay. white man that you're looking for. That's decent advice. Can you believe that people are saying that they met their white man on TikTok? On here! Girl. They said go to Lowe's and Home Depot. Why didn't I think of that? Like, you know, white men are always doing some type of construction. Period. They fix stuff. Bob the Builder. <laughs> they said online. Again, they where like are Bumble, you, though? Tender and Hinge. Huh? Where are you? Uh, it was I a little hit or miss for me. That are with filled Bumble. with black women but doing try stuff. But trash on versus. Guess where? Wait, say that again? I said, where are you? Like, if you go to the Home Depot in Emeryville... You are not finding, I mean, you're finding some, but you're finding, I, I feel like there's more black men in that Home Depot than, 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 yeah. white, than white men. So it's like, where are you? You know, like, are you in Oakland? Are you in Poway? You know, like if you're in Poway, my old hometown, like you're definitely going to find people like my dad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Depot, you know, um, so I mean, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, okay. Um, Some of this is not bad advice. Some of this is not bad advice, but this goes back to what, what are you bringing when you go to those places? Yeah. Just showing up, just showing up is not going to do it. Like you have to be able to have a, hold a conversation and, and talk about intelligent things and, and bring and add value. Right. So they're not going to want to talk about being white men. I can tell you that. You know what I mean? So if that's the only thing right. you have to say, um, <laughs> you know, like, you know, that's not going to really hold the conversation for very long. No. Like, you, you know, you need to bring yourself. You need to be yourself. Right. If you even know what that is. Right. If you know what that is. Back to <laughs> if you know what that is. So anyway. Okay. Um, coffee shops, bitch. Coffee shops. I love coffee. They say go to Walmart. And be down the fishing aisle. That's where you definitely gonna find a man. <laughs> you 
You gotta go Again, to quality. the airport. So you wanna take your ass to the airport, okay? So we catching these flights, we bound to meet somebody at the airport. But hopefully they gonna they go into the same like state or city or whatever that we go into or country because what happens if y'all get y'all lose contact? Like what? Go to Whole Foods, like them bougie supermarkets where you're definitely bound to find you a white boy, okay? And last but not least, they said, go to the dog walk. Even if you ain't got no damn dog, just go to the dog walk, okay? Act like you got a dog. Pretend it's, pretend Lassie running around somewhere and just act like you lost your dog. You're going to find somebody, okay? Period. So I hope all these gems helped y'all. Hopefully it helps me. Listen, we helping each other out here. Thank you to all the women, to all the girls that responded and made my video go viral. That's crazy. I was not expecting that. But hey, girl, listen, I'm helping us out. <laughs> Let me emphasize on the word swag here because I think you guys are getting it misconstrued because I said, give me a white boy with a little bit of swag. Give me a white boy with a little bit, of, little bit of swag doesn't mean that I want him to be urban or I want him to be black or I want him to act black as somebody would say. But what I'm simply saying is he might have money. He might have career. He might have a bomb personality. He might know how to dress. Like, girl, what? Okay, so she wants... So based upon her advice, do you think that advice would help ensure that she would land a high value white man with swag and and desirability well, and, and status. Not at not in Walmart's fishing department. That's gonna be like um one in a billion, right? So especially like a model maybe. <laughs> Like, you have to think about, like, I feel like if you're really trying to get after this, right? Like, you have to think about, okay, you just listed off that you want a white man with swag. So where do white men with swag live? Typically, they live in major cities where there's a good economy, there's good jobs, and they can climb the corporate ladders. Okay? So there's peg one. Peg two is which cities because if you go to san francisco everyone you're gonna find is wearing a flannel and jeans is yep. that swag to you do you find yeah. that attractive legit if so you need to go to san francisco you know if you like something a little bit more cultural like we're in miami now you're gonna find a lot of people who are very fashionable very high class like very into fashion and all that stuff so like you got to think about the cities that you're living in like you're not going to find you're not going to find white men with swag everywhere that's i no 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 <laughs> uh, no i've seen plenty i've seen plenty of like plenty of people across Whole Foods. It Again, it depends oh. on the type of city you're in and where you are. Um, I go to Whole Foods all the time. I mean, I must have broke the law. During yeah, during. Like, since it's only white men can shop at Whole Foods, I must have broke the law during my lunch breaks. But I am a, I don't want to say a Whole Foods junkie, but I kind of became became one just because I, I love organic food. Um, I think it's important if you can get access to it and that's just happens to be some of the best ways to get particular items. So, no, not only white folks are at uh, Whole Foods. But again, these see, these kinds of conversations to me, they're so telling. Because again, if you have to create a video about how to meet a population that is the most likely to be found in America, it's like, already we know where you're at. And then also, I think the elephant in the room is just class. And that's kind of what you're alluding to. Yes. Like, you have to be bringing something to the table. Let's say you're a black woman who runs into a white man at the fishing section in Walmart. Okay, but you're coming in with tattoos, you chewing on your gum, you got wigs, weaves, and sandals, talking in uh, Ebonics, cussing out people, talking about, hey, white boy, like, and you're talking to a high value corporate man who, you know, he, he goes like to fish the on corporate. the weekends. Yes. He, and he's 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 consistently interacting with maybe millionaires. He has clients who are millionaires. It's like, even no. if he is open to dating and mating out, you're not, you can't come with that kind of energy. You have to be a little bit more put together. Um, so there's that no class question. No question. Yes. Like you have to be, you have to have some level of um, appeal. I mean, I hate to be like that. And I, you know, I'm sure that could be taken out of context, but no, you're, you're fine. But it's people like, nice. people think you're being nice in the comments. So, so <laughs> yeah, 
That's awesome. Well, I, I just, you know, I think it does come back. It does come back to class at the end of the day and like how you present yourself. And I can tell you, and like my husband will tell you, he plays zero games and he is not shy about telling people what he really, telling people what he really thinks. And no way would he even look, he'd get out of the aisle. He'd be like, I can't deal with this. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like he just, he would just be like, I, I need to get out of here. I can't handle this. Right. There are actually certain places we don't go because we know the types of people who go there are not people we want to be around. 